Understanding Physics Exponential Decay 2. This is my second video about exponential decay. I'm going to get a little bit more mathematical now. Now n is a quantity that decays exponentially with time. What would be great is if we could actually work out the value of n at any time. If we had an equation n equals something 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 time and we could actually work out the value of n at any point in the future. That would be very useful. Okay, now we can, uh, what we need to know, we need to know the initial value of n, which is n naught, the value of n at t equals naught, and we need to know the decay constant, k. So dn dt equals minus kn, very much our, our definition of an exponential decay. Now, this is something that we call a differential equation. I don't know how much calculus you've done, but this is a differential equation and it has a solution. And the solution to this equation, if we uh, do a bit of integrating, the solution is n equals n naught e to the minus kt. And with this equation, we can work out n at any value of t. Again, I don't know how much maths you've done, but this E is a constant. It's a very, very important constant. It's an irrational number. It's 2.718 something, something, something. OK, it, it's such an important constant that there is actually a button on your calculator, E to the X. If you need to work out E to the X, E to something or other, there is a button on your calculator. It's actually, whether you've done logs or not, it's the base of natural logarithms. Like log to the base 10 is to the base 10. Something called natural logarithms are to the base E. Here's a nice question you can have a go at. Since arriving on an island, the number of dodos, uh, a very tasty, uh, very stupid flightless bird, falls exponentially with time. OK, now before the sailors arrived and brought all their cats and dogs with them, there were 2000 dodos on the island. Uh, on the first day, the number of dodos fell by 80. So our decay constant is uh, 80 over 2000, which is 0.04 days to the minus one. That's our decay constant, 0.04. How many dodos will be left after 10 days? How many would be left after 20 days? And on each of those days, how many dodos will be eaten? You can pause the video and have a go at it yourself. I'll show you the answer. And here we go. So we have n equals n naught e to the minus kt. So it's very much just bunging in the numbers in the first one, 2000 e to the minus 0.04 times 10 and that gives us 1341 and on the 20th day 899 and then the change in n i'm calling it delta n or dndt if you like is uh dndt is k times n so we know what the values of n are so we can work out the change in n or dndt is 54 after on the 10th day and 36 on the 20th day going down exponentially uh, very useful interesting little thing e to the minus kt this term e to the minus kt it's the fraction that remains at any time okay it's a number between naught and one uh, at t equals naught, it, it's one. There's a hundred percent left. If you multiply it by a hundred percent, then you get the percentage that's remaining. Okay. On the first day, uh, or rather at the beginning, e to the minus k t equals one, because t is naught and e to the naught is one. After a long time, it gets smaller and smaller. It falls exponentially. After a very long time, it's approaching zero. OK, there's very little left. So that's a useful thing to remember. E to the minus KT is the fraction that is remaining. 
what's the relationship between the decay constant and the half-life? This is important. Consider this. Okay. Now, a bigger decay constant, for example, a bigger hole for the water to come out, would mean that the half-life would be smaller. Okay, the relationship is that the half-life is inversely proportional to the decay constant. If you've got a big decay constant, you'll have a small half-life and vice versa. I'm not going to prove this equation. Uh, it's not that hard to prove if you're doing A-level maths, but it's T half equals log 2, natural log of 2, over K. T half equals log 2 over K. So if you know the decay constant, you can work out the half-life and vice versa. In my uh, last video, there were a few examples. You know, we can work out the half-life of a dice now. The half-life of a dice would be log 2 divided by a sixth, which is 2.48 throws. You know, a dice should last, on average, about two and a half throws. And our prisoner with his piece of cheese, uh, after how long will half of it be left? It'll be after 1.79 days, half of his cheese will be left. Okay, so Tuesday evening, I think. <laughs>